Hello, welcome to my pop-up workshop. Today we're going to be discussing healthy and constructive engagements with First Nations people. Please stay tuned for the presentation. So community leagues have a lot of potential to encourage healing through positive and healthy community engagement. Com community leagues have a great deal of resources by which community healing can be made possible through strengthened relationships with Indigenous communities, facilitated through a proper communication of issues, support in addressing issues, and strengthening First Nations community members by offering support to community healing. This is done through a communicate, support, and strengthen model. It's important to acknowledge that we are all treaty people. Indigenous or not, we all occupy the lands historically occupied by Indigenous nations, hereafter referred to correctly as First Nations. First Nations people welcome newcomers onto their land when explorers arrived in Turtle Island. They, caught these, they taught these newcomers how to survive in the unforgiving Canadian climate. Treaty applies, therefore, to all of us, regardless of race, gender, or background, because we all occupy this land. Further to that, it is important to understand the, and empathize with First Nations people regarding our combined historical past. What today is known as Canada is the result of decades of genocide and continued assimilationist policies against First Nations people. Many First Nations people you see today are battered and broken from decades of intergenerational trauma that they have collectively experienced. Many do not understand how this trauma affects them in their everyday lives and as a result can display maladaptive behaviors some may view as deviant or offensive. So as further to that, it is important to make sure that you understand that where these people are coming from, myself included, um, trauma has been a large factor in their developmental cycle. Therefore, they may not know how to respond and have developed um, methods of responding to people that maybe you don't quite understand. But this is based on them having a very different uh, background than most people have um, if they've grown up in a remote reserved community or even if they grew up uh, in an urban community. But, um, experienced socioeconomic factors that may have otherwise prevented them to prevented them from experiencing utmost enjoyment in life. So here are some tips for positive outcomes when it comes to engaging with First Nations people, be it in your community, in your workplace, or maybe just on the street or on the bus or maybe when you travel and you get to experience First Nations people in other countries, because throughout the world, there are people who have founded lands um, in Australia, in New, Zealand, in New Zealand, in the United States. There are First Nations people, or um, otherwise referred to by governments as indigenous people, who were there prior to the arrival of uh, colonial entities. Uh, 
So an important Ojibwe teaching to remember is you have two ears and one mouth. Listen more, talk less. And some tips for positive outcomes are as follows. Number one, please offer words of encouragement. Award positive behavior or actions with positive feedback and support. This is very much needed. Discourage self-destructive words or habits. Positively uplift and remind individuals to see the good in themselves. And when they put themselves down and say things like, I am no good at this, or I suck at that, remind them that those thoughts are not conducive to their goals. This is also extremely important because um, maybe people may have grown up in unhealthy environments if they grew up um, in institutions which um, are very prevalent among the lives of First Nations people, such as child welfare, or um, if they had relatives that grew up in residential schools, they will have experienced um, different social skills and different um, methods of socializing than maybe you and I might be used to or other people might be used to. Uh, and so it is important to remind them to see the good in themselves. If they never had anybody who ever uh, reminded them to see the good in themselves, you could be that person and it, you could take that opportunity to change someone's life if you have the uh, opportunity to interact with them in such a way. Never take anything to heart. This is the third, but still not any less important point um, of these points. So shortness, rudeness, and impatience is common, but do not ever take it personally um, or reciprocate that behavior. This is probably how some certain people were taught to interact, um, as this type of behavior is usually absorbed uh, through your engagements at a very young age, and your engagements are typically shaped by uh, your developmental years at a very young age. So um, <clears throat> you have the opportunity to reinforce positive engagements by using positive language and um, interacting differently and being polite and courteous no matter what. And then yes, so uh, you can again encourage healing through positive and healthy community engagement. So these opportunities that you have to work with First Nations people or talk to First Nations people or um, in any other way communicate with First Nations people could be an opportunity to rewrite history in a way where you can really um, interact in a positive way and set a better footing than perhaps maybe your ancestors did or the previous governments have. And this way we can bridge gaps and learn to reconcile our history with our present. Thank you very much for watching my pop-up workshop.